Hey, what's going on everybody? It's you bro. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, we're going to create a game of rock, paper, scissors in C sharp. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, everybody, let's create a game of rock, paper, scissors. What I like to do is declare all the things that we'll need at the top of our program. We'll need a random object to generate a random number for the computer's choice. So we'll say that one equals rock, two equals paper, and three equals scissors. So we'll need to create a random object, random random equals new random. And we'll create a Boolean variable named play again. And I will set this to equal true. So if the player decides to exit, they would not like to play another game. We can set this to be false. And we'll need a string variable to hold the player's choice. I will declare this, but not yet assign it. So this will store rock, paper, or scissors and we'll need a string variable for the computer's choice as well. Okay, that's all of the different variables that we'll need. So let's create a while loop. While play again equals true. Now, if we're working with Boolean variables, we technically don't need this equals true portion because this by itself would evaluate to be true or false. So you can just say while play again, and that would work as well. And then if the player decides to quit, we can change that to false. Okay, now let's ask for some user input. Console.write, enter rock, paper, or scissors. And we will store the user's input within string variable player. Player equals console.read line. Now, strings are case sensitive. What I'm going to do is take the player's input and make it all uppercase, just so that everything is consistent. Player equals player dot two upper. I guess you could make this all lowercase too. Okay, now let's display the player's choice with a right line statement. So what if the player decides to choose something that isn't rock, paper, or scissors? We would want some way to enforce that. So let's say that I choose the gun, and that's a valid response. So we should probably prevent the player from doing so. So what we'll do is use a nested while loop. So while, then surround this section of code within a set of curly braces, and we will continue to prompt the user to type in something that is valid, a valid choice. So this is our condition, while player does not equal rock, and I'm just going to copy this player does not equal paper and player does not equal scissors. So we'll need to assign player and computer a value. Let's do that at the top of our while loop for play again. So player equals an empty string and computer equals an empty string. So this is kind of nice. When we do play another round, we can reset player and computer. Okay, let's try this. Enter rock, paper, or scissors. I pick the gun. Enter rock, paper, or scissors. How about a bomb? Fist? Nope. Okay, so we have to choose either rock, paper, or scissors. What about rock? Cool, so that is a valid response. Okay, so let's get rid of this right line statement. We won't really need it anymore. Now we'll need to generate a random number for the computer player, one, two, or three. And I will use a switch. So we will place the random number that is generated within the parentheses. We could say like, I don't know, int random num equals random dot next. And the range is going to be one through four. So remember that this number is exclusive. This will generate a random whole number between one and three. Okay, then what I'm going to do is technically we don't need this portion. Like we could place random num within switch, but what I like to do is kind of shorten and condense my code. So I'm going to take this method of random not next and place it within the switch itself. And that would work as well. So let's examine some cases. Case one, that will be rock. Computer equals rock, all uppercase, then break. And we'll need case two in case the random number is two. Case two, 
computer equals paper, then break. And case three, computer equals scissors, then break. What I'm going to do after our switch is display the player's choice along with the computer's random choice. So let's use a right line statement. So player colon space plus variable player. Then let's create another right line for the computer. Computer plus computer. And let's run this. Okay. I will choose rock, player, rock, computer, scissors. Let's play again. I will choose paper, player, paper, computer, paper, and scissors. Player, scissors, computer, scissors. Okay, now we just need to examine our choices and see who wins. That's the next step. Now, what we'll do at this point is create a switch to examine the player's choice versus the computer's choice, and we can decide who wins. So let's create a switch and we will examine the variable player against many different cases. So the first case will be rock. And for now, we'll just break. We'll fill this in a little bit later. Case, paper, break, and case, scissors, and break. All right, we're going to check to see what the computer picked. So if computer is equal to rock, then it's a draw. So let's write, it's a draw. I think I'm missing a break statement. All right, then else if, computer equals paper, that means that we lose. Else if computer equals paper, then we will write, you lose. Else, technically we don't need a condition because the only choice left is scissors for the computer. Else, you win. So let's copy these statements, paste it underneath paper. So if we choose paper and the computer chooses rock, that means that we win. So let's change this to you win. If we choose paper and the computer chooses paper, that means it's a draw. Else you lose. Let's copy this again paste it underneath scissors. So if we pick scissors and the computer picks rock, you lose. If we choose scissors, the computer picks paper, then we win. You win. Else, it's a draw. All right, let's test it. All right, enter rock, paper, scissors. Let's go with rock. Rock, paper, you lose. Let's choose paper this time. Paper, scissors, you lose again. And let's try scissors. Scissors, rock, you lose. Man, I kind of suck at this game. <laughs> let's try it again. Paper, paper, rock. Okay, I finally won one. Cool. Now at this point, we're going to let the player decide if they would like to play another round. So place this code at the end of our outer while loop. So I'm just going to follow the dots here. So that would go right here. All right, so let's use a write statement. Would you like to play again? Y slash N. So Y for yes, N for no. Actually, I think I'm going to create another variable. So let's do so at the top. String answer. And we should probably reset this to answer equals an empty string. 
Okay, so we will add one more variable. Okay, answer equals console dot read line. Then let's make it uppercase in case the player enters in something that is lowercase. We'll still count it. Answer equals answer dot two upper. Then let's check to see what the player enters in. If answer is equal to y, then play again equals true. Else play again equals false. All right, then outside of the while loop, we will display a goodbye message. Maybe we'll say, thanks for playing. All right, let's try it one last time. Okay, enter rock, paper, scissors. Always choose rock. Player rock, computer paper, you lose. Would you like to play again? Yes. Let's pick rock again. Rock, paper, you lose. Okay, maybe don't always pick rock. Would you like to play again? No, because this is a dumb game. Thanks for playing. Well, okay then everybody, that is a game of rock, paper, scissors. If you would like a copy of this code, I will post this to the comment section down below. If you can, smash that like button, leave a random comment down below. And well, that's a game of rock, paper, scissors for C-sharp.